Hi guys and welcome to another one. This one is specifically when I got the email that these books were free on Amazon. Again, these are all ebooks. These were under the category on my email as historical romance. That's all I know. I don't know if it's spicy, if it's clean, if it's Regency, if it's erotica <laughs> or anything like that. So I have these all pulled up on tabs and like all the videos like this before, I'll be looking off to the side to tell you the title, author, synopsis, and anything else that I think is pertinent to know that I can see right off. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. There's one book that I got that is actually came in a box set with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. Um, <laughs> So, and based on the title of like the last book, I'm thinking it's going to be spicy, but we shall see. So I'll, I'll try to remember which one that is, but I think there's like one or two other videos that I forgot to say that, but really it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, it's sometimes things just come in a box set of like the first three books or the whole series that end up being free. So like, well, why the heck not? <laughs> anyway, so this first one I'm going to tell you about is For the, For the Love of the Viscount. This is written by Kelly Hutton. 803 ratings with an average of 3.93. And this is book number one in the Noble Hearts series. This one says it's a historical romance novella, Regency, and that's it. An adult. So, uh, let's go ahead and get into the synopsis. It says, Blue stocking Lady Elise Smith is a very content spinster. She holds intellectual gatherings and attends poetry readings, mind-improving lectures, and art shows. She runs her father's household with quiet and, de and uh, determined efficiency, which is why she is absolutely stunned when Papa informs his three daughters that until Lady Elise is happily settled with gasp, a husband, he will not consider offers for his two younger daughters. And wasn't that pretty much t the typical thing? The eldest was supposed to get married first. Anyway. Um, and that's just from what I've seen from movies and read from other books. Whether or not that's actually true, I don't know. Um, but if you know for sure, definitely let me know in the comment section. Anyway, the synopsis continues on saying, Lord Simon St. George has happily watched one friend after another become leg shackled, taking pride in the fact that his title is secured by a brother and nephew. So there is no reason to seek a wife for himself. When he sees a woman previously unknown to him at a ball who seems to be hiding from the rest of the attendees, he is intrigued enough to introduce himself. Simon sees a lovely, intelligent woman to pass the time with. Elise sees a man who could help her thwart her father by pretending they are courting. But even the best plans can go awry. So definitely maybe like a fake dating. So, and the cover looks like it would be a pretty spicy book from what I can see. Okay, next up we have The Footman and I. This is written by Valerie Bowman. This is book number one in the Footman's Club series. 1,991 ratings with an average of 3.84. Um, as far as genres, it says historical, Regency, British, adult, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's just a different play on words there, like historical, historical romance, historical fiction. <laughs> anyway, okay, uh, let's see. Let the games begin. Every fortune-hunting female in London is after the newly titled Earl of Kendall, but he's intent on finding a wife whose heart is true. So, while drunkenly jesting with his friends in a pub one night, he has an idea. What if the ladies of the ton didn't know he was a wealthy Earl? Maybe it's supposed to be town, but a typo. That would make more sense. What if the ladies of the town didn't know he was a wealthy Earl? That makes more sense than ton. <laughs> Uh, okay. All he has to do is pose as a servant at his friend's summer country house party and make sure the guest list is full of beautiful, eligible debutantes. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the fact that he falls in love and she thinks that he is not, and she thinks he is who he says he is. No, she thinks. How? What? 
that she thinks he is someone that he actually is not. Anyway. Okay. Um, okay, the next book I have is When Love Shows the Way. It looks like this is a standalone. This was written by Carol uh, Co Kohler. Collier. 245 ratings with an average of 4.47 and this all this tells me is that it's a historical western romance so don't know anything outside of that. At the age of 17 Lizzie Cassidy's parents forcibly marry her off to a wealthy yet despicable man to improve their family's status. Fate has another trial in store for her though when her infuriated husband violently separates her from her daughter who she is determined to track down no matter the consequences. As she follows the, her trail, she ends up in Clinton, where she meets Jake, who proves to be a valuable companion on her quest. She knows that from the first time she looked into his eyes, her heart skipped a beat and her traumas started healing. But will she manage to turn a new page in her life, or will she have to sacrifice a piece of herself to move on? Jake Oakley, son of the mayor of Clinton, seems to have a perfect life until he messes it all up by stumbling on a terrible family secret. When he thoughtlessly exposes it to the wrong people, there are unforeseen consequences that force him to leave town in order to fix his mistakes. However, an alarming letter about his mother's health postpones his plans, leading him disappointed back to Clinton. Upon his arrival, a beautiful young lady shows up as a gift from heaven, as she finds a unique way to drive his guilt away and clear his mind. After all this time, his lonely heart will be warmed once again and his future won't feel so lonely anymore. Could she be the salvation he has been looking for all along? What was her name? Oh, Lizzie Cassidy. Okay. Jake and Lizzie unite with a common goal when their seemingly unrelated paths suddenly cross and change their lives forever. Lizzie has a hard time trusting people and Jake is determined to make things right. Just when things start looking up for them, an old threat will swoop in and risk ripping them apart. Um, and I've heard that being called like the third act in a romance book, so. Will the powerful light of the romance dissipate the dangers that lurk in the shadows? That sounds really good. Um, and I, yeah, that sounds good. So obviously from that definite trigger for um, not parent parental abandonment, but a forced separation or alienation, something like that is what that sounds like. Okay, next I have When Love's When Love Comes in Disguise, written by Carol Col Collier. Yet again, I think she's on here another let me see. I have her on here one more time. There's another book that I have by Carol. Um and that's the only other one I can see. So this is the second one by the same author, which is the one I just read that other synopsis for. This one has 153 ratings with an average of 4.44. And this one says, uh, the genres say that this is a historical Western. Obviously, remember, these are all going to be historical romance. But again, I don't know if they're Western Regency or whatever it is. This one, in this particular case, it's a Western. So that's two by Carol where they are Western. So I'm wondering if that's what Carol writes, are historical Westerns. Now, uh, let's see, it says, after meeting in an orphanage many years ago, Ellen and Alice promise to stay close and protect each other, no matter what. When Alice attracts the attention of a kind man who wants to marry her, Ellen follows her to Fort Worth without a second thought, not even about where she will stay in this new town. Fearless and determined, she quickly comes up with an outrageous plan. She disguises herself as a man and gets a job at Alice's husband's ranch. Yet she never counted on meeting a husband man, uh, a handsome man there who complicates her thoughts and feelings. She should risk should she risk telling him who she really is, or should she keep her secret and never have and never even have the chance to be with him? You know, I've seen movies where the women disguise themselves as men, um, and then it just complicates things, and I just find that fascinating because it's like how are things getting complicated? how are things going to become unraveled, how fast, how messy. It's I do find that to be an interesting plot device. Uh, so that already has me intrigued. Ben is happy helping his best friend's ranch, helping at his best friend's ranch, learning a lot and guiding the new ranch hands. When his best friend finds a wife from a newspaper ad, Ben, ben thinks he's quite careless to marry someone he has never met. 
His thoughts are completely forgotten, though, the minute he meets a mysterious woman in town and becomes determined to learn more about her. Much to his frustration, she disappears and reappears at the ranch out of nowhere, visiting a friend and always seeming to keep her distance from him. Where did she come from, and why doesn't she allow him to spend more time with her? Can Ben solve this riddle and learn and earn her trust? Both Ellen and Ben feel a strong pull to each other from the very first moment their eyes meet. Ellen's heart flutters during their fleeting moments together, but sinks as soon as she has to disguise herself again. When everything inevitably comes to light, as they always do, <laughs> will it shatter their grown connection forever? Or could their feelings be enough to keep them together? Definitely intrigued by that book. Okay. Next up, I have, you know what, let me go ahead and skip over to the other one by Carol. Okay. So this other one by Carol Collier is called A Love She Would Never Forget. Um, I see a horse on the cover that I'm seeing on Goodreads. I'm guessing it's a Western. Yes, it is a Western. <laughs> so uh, that's all I know about that one. This one has 324 ratings with an average of 4.3. So the synopsis on this one reads, Ruth Wagner's day in New York City days in New York City are almost identical to each other. That is, until one day tragedy strikes and she loses everything. In the hope of a better life, she answers an ad advertisement from a sheriff in Oklahoma. After ser a series of romantic letters which culminate in a marriage proposal, she leaves to find him and start all over again. But on the way to him, a train accident sends her to a hospital diagnosed with amnesia. Will she remember the reason she was traveling? Sheriff Garrett Hughes deals with his, uh, with his own dark past with loneliness and isolation until his friend writes an advertisement for him to request a mail order bride. He never expected love could warm up his heart. But when his bride doesn't show up and news of a train crash reach him, he is terrified he has lost his only chance to find happiness. He rushes to the hospital where victims are being taken care of and, even more, and, even, and an even more shocking surprise awaits him. Will he be able to find her in this impossible situation? They both have been hurt in the past, but love has the power to solve everything. Can they hold on to the love they built through letters until they find each other? Will they help each other face their past traumas and find the happiness they both deserve? So um, it does say no cheating, no cliffhangers, and a guaranteed happily ever after. So the way these three synopsises sounded for these three books, all by Carol Collier, they sound clean, so I will be surprised if there is smut or spice, however you want to call it, but they sound clean. So, And the covers do not give the impression, at least the covers that I'm seeing, do not give the impression that there's going to be any explicit sex. So, okay, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so now we're on to different, <laughs> different authors. This one is called Find Following Her True Calling. This is written by Elaine Shields. This has 96 ratings with an average of 4.46. Um, and the only genre listed is that this is um, historical, so which is what we are going to know about every single one of these books I'll mention. Loretta's sheltered life revolves around helping children and enjoying the beauty of the wilderness. Her curious nature leads her to wander to wander, and on one of her outings, fate brings Colt, a kind teacher, into her life. Sadly, her father's constant meddling will unintentionally drive him away from her. Eager to discover her roots and get away from her present circumstances, she escapes to her old hometown. Faced with an impossible choice, she will be able will she be able to uncover the truth before it's too late? A former orphan himself, Colt Jacobs has devoted his life to helping the less fortunate children. When he meets Loretta, he realizes that he has never met a person who is as caring for orphans as she is. Soon, however, he discovers that he knows nearly nothing about her background. When Loretta disappears without a warning, leaving him heartbroken, he has no option but to head west to seek a better future. Will Colt be able to get uh, to... Oh, okay, let me try that again. Will Colt be able to let go of his past, or will it come back to change his life once more? Colt and Loretta will find a way to rekindle their relationship, but her father's objections are fierce. Their love is threatened by outside forces that will do anything to break them. Can their pure relationship survive the terrible consequences when the truth is revealed? 
So, sounds good. Now this next book, uh, the, co the cover definitely looks a little bit steamier, but we shall see. Uh, this one says medieval, uh, paranormal, Scotland, fae, fantasy, and obviously historical romance. This one is To Steal a Highlander's Heart, written by Samantha Holt. This is book number one in Highland Fae Chronicles. It has 570 ratings with an average of 3.83. This one says Mor Moray, Scotland, 1230. Like the year is 1230. Alana sets eyes on Morgan for the first time in several years, and what does he do? He captures her, but Alana refuses to go meekly with the sexy Highland warrior. Her kidnapping will reignite the rift that's existed between the two clans since her father accused Morgan of, the th of theft, and she doesn't want to see her father harmed in the inevitable war that will ensue. Unfortunately for Alana, the fairies seek to interfere with her plans to escape. The side city, sidey, I don't know. Um, this group have a debt to repay, and Tilly, the green fairy, is determined to mend the rift between the clans for good, and that means ensuring Alana and Morgan marry. Morgan has his own reasons for taking Alana, and they are nothing to do with marriage or war. He wants to use her to reveal a secret from the past, the one that had him accused of theft. If only he didn't find his childhood friend so attractive. When circumstances force them together, and Alana's life is threatened and war is imminent. Can Morgan reveal the truth without losing Alana? And will the fairies meddling help or hinder his cause? So, fairies. They, yeah. Okay. Moving on, this one is also another medieval historical romance. This is Highland Lion, written by Celeste Barclay. This is book number one in the Clan Sinclair Legacy. A warrior determined, oh, 245 ratings with an average of 4.57. Okay. A warrior determined to step out of his family's, family's shadow. Liam McKay journeys to Orkney to oversee the transfer of control from the Norwegian king to his grandfather, Laird Liam Sinclair, Earl of uh, Caithness. Honored with the mission from his namesake, Liam is determined to prove to his parents, Tristan and uh, Marguerite uh, McKay, he is no longer the wee lad they think. No one in the Sinclair or McKay clans believed the transition would be smooth, but Liam never imagined he'd be caught in the midst of a woman's perilous attempt to escape being ripped from her homeland. A farmer's daughter determined to control her future. Um, Ellen, I'm guessing, it, uh, Ibister, <laughs> never imagined her mother would remarry, especially not to the brutal Norwegian trader who visited their home on Orkney, on, on Orkney. Aline understands her fate if she is forced to follow her mother and stepfather to Norway. Desperate to flee with her younger siblings, Aline turns to the one man she believes can save them. With rescue in sight, Aline believe, believes she's found a path to a peaceful future, but she underestimates how her life will change living amongst Highlanders. A couple determined to follow their own path. Um, let's see, it's like, oh, if you love this author, etc. If you or if you love this other book by this author, then you'll like this series. I mean, it does say it, it is steamy, so and the cover definitely gives that impression that I'm seeing that it'll definitely be more on the steamier side. Up next, I have Wild Angel, written by Miriam Ming Minger. This is the O'Brien Brides series. It's book number one in that series. This one has 3,520. Okay, so this one has 3,529 ratings with an average of 3.99, so just shy of a four star. So this is historical um, romance, obviously. Uh, medieval is the other one on here, and Ireland, so as well as adult. So we've had a few Scottish ones. This is the first Irish one so far. I don't know if there's going to be any more Irish romances, but we shall see. 
Ronan was a legend among men, and the last thing he needed was a troublesome woman. Yet this fierce Irish warrior took a deathbed oath to protect a chieftain's rebellious daughter. Uh, Triona was a hellion of a woman who would let no man rule her. Raised in the ways of a warrior, she defied Ronan's every command, so he planned to marry her off to be rid of the wild lass forever. But in the heat of battle, inflamed by her passionate spirit, Roman, Ronan decided he wanted this beautiful, impossible woman for himself. Don't know what to think on that. It just doesn't give me much there, so... Okay, up next I have The Weaver Takes a Wife, written by Sherry Cobb South. This is book number one in the Weaver series. It has 1,988 ratings with an average of 4.09. Uh, as far as the genres, it says Regency, Historical, Clean, Traditional Regency, and British Literature are the, the flags you might, or the tags for the genres you might be interested in. It says, Haughty Lady Helen Radney is one of London's most beautiful women and the daughter of a duke, but her sharp tongue has frightened away most of her suitors. When her father gambles away his fortune, the duke's only chance for recouping his losses lies in marrying off Lady Helen. Did I say Helene? I think it's Helen. Um, anyway, marrying off Lady Helen to any man wealthy enough to take a bride with nothing to recommend her but a lovely face and an 800-year-old pedigree. Enter Mr. Ethan Brundy, once an illegitimate workhouse orphan, now owner of a Lang uh, Lancashire textile mill and one of England's richest men. When he glimpses Lady Helen at the Covent Garden Theatre, he is instantly smitten and vows to marry her. But this commonest of commoners will have his work cut out for him if he hopes to win the heart of his aristocratic bride. Okay, sounds good. Okay, next up, this one definitely looks steamy <laughs> from the cover that I'm seeing, and it is called Surrendering to the Rake, written by Georgette Brown. This is, and it tells me right in the name of the series, this is book number one in the Steamy Regency Romance series. This has 750 ratings with an average of 3.58. As far as the genres, it says, obviously, historical romance, Regency, novella, ah, BDSM, and erotica is what that one says. So definitely be aware of that. This one says, in this sexy historical romance, the Earl of Blythe turns the tables on a meddling Regency miss. Determined to save her cousin from certain ruin at the hands of a notorious rake, Miss Heloise Merrill impersonates her cousin and takes her place at the Chateau of Debauchery. She intends to convince the rake, Sebastian Cadwell, Earl of Blythe, to turn his attentions elsewhere. Deprived of his intended guest, Sebastian decides to provide the meddling Miss Merrill a much-deserved set-down. But when things take a decidedly hot turn, he finds he wants to go beyond a simple set-down. Can Heloise stand her ground, or will she surrender to the rake? In other words, she's going to surrender or submit to him because that's the name of the book. So do with that what you will. Now this next one does not have a synopsis on Goodreads and all it tells me is that it's a historical romance, which we already knew from the title of this video. Uh, this is called The Scots Temptation. It's a medieval historical romance novel. And this was written by Eloise Madigan. 19 ratings with an average of 4.21. Now I do have this on an Amazon tab here, so let's switch over. Um, it says it's 168 pages, so it's a shorter book. And the synopsis says, now on Amazon there are 16 ratings and it's averaging a 4.2 out of 5 stars. And it says, in order to find a husband, Evelyn has to stay a few weeks in a newly appointed Laird's castle. But on the first day, she realizes her room is opposite her clan's worst enemy. And thus, the torture begins. For Lady, oh, excuse me, for Laird Rise is a rogue, albeit a charismatic one. Spending three weeks near the innocent Evelyn is a temptation Rise has to tame down. And though he can be a villain, for her he would go against his clan to make her his. It says it's a steamy Scottish historical romance. So, no cheating, no cliffhangers. Lots of steam and a happy ending. So there you go. At least on Amazon, it tells us that there's going to be a lot of steam. 
Okay, moving on, this next book only tells me it's a romance. And this is called The Space Between the Seasons, written by Justice Tilsher. This one has eight ratings with an average of 4.5, so definitely lower on the ratings. Is it because it's a newer release? Ah, it's because it's a new release. This was published March 14th, so that's why there's so little um, ratings on it. So, and I haven't heard anyone talk about this one. When 26-year-old governess Autumn Everly witnesses her sister's engagement to infamous world traveler Mr. Williams, her world falls apart. An undoubtedly dynamic character with a charming personality and a generous spirit, he is entirely unsuitable for patience. Autumn, who has cared for her little sister since their wretched childhood, is fiercely protective of the only family she has left in the world. Completely understandable. Mr. Williams' proposal wrenches open a lifelong fracture of disagreement between the sisters. Patience yearns to explore the world, be out in society, and escape the mun the, munda the mundanity uh, of her provincial life. Autumn, on the other hand, is all too aware of the dangers that could befall a young woman. Almost entirely self-sufficient, she craves safety and predictability. Terrified of losing her sister after years of peaceful, peaceful sanctuary together, Autumn decides there is only one way to protect patients from herself. Separate the happy couple before it's too late. Well then, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, up next I have... Oh, it's L-E-I-F is the name of the title, and I think it's either... I think it's Leaf? I'm not positive. If you know for sure how to pronounce that, if I am wrong, please let me know in the comment section below because I am not positive. I've never seen that word before, so I'm guessing it's Leaf, but I could be way wrong. This was written by Celeste Barclay. Didn't she? Didn't we just have one by her? I don't know. The name sounds familiar. But anyway, okay, moving on. This is book number one in the Viking Glory series. So obviously this is going to be Viking. And this has 684 ratings with an average of 4.19. Uh, this one says historical romance, medieval, Viking. Oh, what did I hit? Let me go back. Go back. No, I don't want that. And, um, adventure is the only other tag on there. Okay, uh, moving on to the synopsis, it says, Fate brought them together. Free will binds them. Okay. And again, I'm going to say Leaf. <laughs> Leaf Iverson wants nothing more than to enjoy the comforts of home after sailing for months. When a neighboring Jarl arrives bearing news of a threat to their land and security, Leif knows there will be no rest for him. Tasked with finding and bringing back this Jarl's niece, Leif departs on a journey that fate designed, but he chooses to carry out. Sigrid something. Uh, Sigrid visions have been both a gift and a curse since she was, or Sigrid? Sigrid? I don't know. Um, okay, visions have been less than a curse since she was a young girl, now a woman. Sigrid's position as a seer puts her in danger when enemies seek to take advantage of her gift for their benefit and to keep her from saving her family. Sigrid knows she cannot defy fate, and when Leif comes to her rescue, Leif discovers destiny cannot be ignored. Leif and Sigrid, Sigrid struggle to reconcile the future the gods have shown her with the shifting fate their enemies attempt to control. Will a new love survive the tests of war and family? Can a match created by fate withstand the machinations of man? And it does say this is a steamy historical series um, that will transport you back to the world of ancient Norse. So, there you go. Um... Let's move on. This one is called The Delacorte Inheritance, written by Joanna Marie. 48 ratings with an average of 4.52. Only tag is historical romance. So, which, again, obvious from this title. If a Delacorte man fails to sire a son, the next closest male relative inherits everything. 
thanks to that centuries-old edict issued by a long-dead ancestor, a stranger, a distant cousin from England, has come to claim what is rightfully his inheritance. 1860 Charleston. Antoinette de la Corte enters her uncle's office and is shocked to find a handsome stranger sitting behind the desk. She's even more shocked when Elliot Fleming introduces himself as the legitimate heir to her late father's estate, which includes the company she's always believed to be hers. Or it will be or it will be as soon as she comes of age, and if there is anything left of a business that seldom turns a profit. With secrets of his own, Elliot must focus on his mission, even if it means deceiving an innocent young lady. He doesn't have time for romantic entanglements, but despite his resolve, he finds himself drawing ever closer to Antoinette. When love blossoms between the two, Antoinette dares to dream of a future she can she never expected to have. James Bladden, Antoinette's maternal uncle, never misses an opportunity to remind his orphaned niece that it is only by virtue of his kind heart that she even has a roof over his, over her head. Thanks to her late father's mismanagement, his estate doesn't generate enough income to cover her living expenses. That's what her uncle says, anyway. But the estate is quite lucrative. Uh, Blandon is looted, has looted it, of course he has, Blandon has looted it for many years and is furious it's about to be snatched away from him. When Elliot attempts to untangle Blandon's web of lies, he discovers an adversary who will stop at nothing to keep a stolen fortune. Will Antoinette and Elliot survive her uncle's attempts to destroy them, or will Elliot's own deception force them apart? Boy, she's just surrounded by thieving, dishonest, lying men. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. And you got to remember, I mean, it's historical, and in that time, what was that, 1860? I mean, women were treated as objects and like, you know, and trash, and definitely not like we are today. Um, and everything, everything went to the man back then. So, anyway, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next book. This one is called A Night to Remember, written by Cynthia Lures. This is uh, book number one in Nights Through Time series. This one has 1,794 ratings with an average of 3.84. As far as genres, it has time travel, historical romance, fantasy, and medieval and paranormal. So, Fall Through Time, Vacation to England, check. Haunting Castle Ruins, check. Proper English Lord for a Boyfriend, well, almost check. Be careful what you wish for. Lucy Merriweather's supposedly perfect boyfriend attempted to murder her during a visit to Blackford Castle, falling through time to 1300s medieval England. She lands in a tangled heap at the feet of a tar tarnished, tarnished, grumpy knight with secrets of his own and no time to spare for a crazy damsel in distress. I'm already intrigued by the time travel, so <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that one goes. All right, up next I have The Viscount's Tempting Minx, written by Erica Ridley. Just because it says minx, I'm thinking it's probably going to be more steamy, but we'll see. It's This is book number one in The Dukes of War, 5,963 ratings with an average of 3.8, and... Oh, it says there's an older title and cover. Let's see. Oh, I kind of like the older cover. Anyway, uh, the older title is The Viscount's Christmas Temptation. So, it's been retitled to The Viscount's Tempting Niece. This does say it is Christmas. It's a novella, historical fiction, Regency, and that's it. That's all it tells me. Okay. Moving on, it says certain individuals might consider Lady Amelia Pembroke a man a managing sort of female, but truly most people would have lost without her help would be lost without her help. Why the latest on it is that rakish Viscount Sheffield is canceling the fete of the year because he hasn't time for silly soirees. He doesn't need time, he needs her. When a flash of lightning destroys the venue for his family's annual Christmas ball, Lord Benedict Sheffield intends to enjoy a relaxing holiday for once. 
but after 12 days of beguiling Lady Amelia's guerrilla tactics, he's up to his cravat with tinsel and tumbling head over heels in love. So that, to me, that actually sounds really good. I just don't know if it's going to be clean or spicy and how spicy, if it is going to have the spice. I, I just don't know. I can't tell from that. This next one, um, okay, I can tell this will be very spicy. It says, it's a Wicked Revenge, written by M. Brown. This has 15 ratings. Now, this is on the lower side from what I have seen with all of these so far. This has a 2.93 rating. Uh, this one tells me, as far as the tags go, that this is, um, obviously, it's historical romance, but it also lists erotica as a tag. Uh, the synopsis is short. It says the Marquess of Kerry intends to provide Miss Primrose a set down she will never forget after what she did to his brother at the Inn of the Red Chrysanthemum, where members indulge in illicit pleasures. He entices the wicked harlot to spend a night at his estate, but when Miss Primrose inflames his passions, will she prove too hot for him to handle? So, there you go. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on. This next one is a Western historical romance, and it is called No Place for Tender Hearts, written by Christine Chase, an author that has my name. Uh, 40 ratings with an average of 4.03. I don't see an, a lot of authors with the name Christine, and I probably just have to dig deeper, because it is a fairly common name. So, uh, let's see, she and the, oh, I said this was a Western historical romance. Okay. Okay, so the synopsis on this one says, She built wealth and power in a godforsaken town. Now everyone wants to take it away. So I'm wondering if this will also be maybe Christian or religious, just from that little sentence, but not necessarily. California, 1852, in a town where men outnumber women 50 to 1, Caroline Daughtry carves a path of wealth and influence. But when former lover-turned-rival... Henry Sinclair seeks to gain some of that wealth for himself, Carolyn is forced to fend off his un underhanded deeds. And when grief-stricken Daniel Hauser comes to town in search of a new life, he catches Caroline's eye. She isn't the only one to notice when Henry finds himself with a sudden jealous streak. When Caroline battles to retain all she has worked for, she finds herself under attack on, any th on another front when young Sarah Connolly turns up on her doorstep. Coming from money and privilege back in Boston, Sarah made the treacherous journey west to find Caroline. Caroline's world is soon turned on end, and she knows she must keep the truth about Sarah's family hidden from Henry, for it would only add fuel to his fire. However, when Caroline learns a man searches for Sarah, a man with the power to destroy the town, she must decide who are her enemies and who are her friends. So I cannot tell if this is going to be Christian or not, um, which it, to me it doesn't matter. But I only said, it only increased my wonderment about that because it said it was a godforsaken town. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's Christian. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not positive on that. I can't tell you for sure one way or the other. Okay, this next one I have is called The, De the Duke's Refuge, written by Laurie Dudley. This is book number one in the Leeward Islands series. And... 419 ratings with an average of 4.43. This one says it's Regency. This one is does say it is a Christian romance uh, as well. So, I, this, not as well. This is the first one that... No, is it the first one? I don't know. But this one does say it's a Christian romance. So, this one says, When love comes in a tempest, who knew it would wear pink? Georgia Lennox... Is it Georgia? Yeah, Georgia Lennox has traded in her boyish ways for pink gowns and a coy smile to capture the eye of the Earl of Claremont. However, in the day she's convinced the Earl will propose, Georgia is shipped off to the Leeward Islands to care for her ailing father. But when she arrives on Nevis, the last thing she expects is to learn that her abrupt departure was not at her father's bidding, but that of the infuriating yet captivating island schoolmaster. And now her plans may well be shipwrecked. Harrison Wells is haunted by the memories of his diseased wife and haunted by the subsequent women who aspire to be the next Duchess of Linton. Desiring anonymity, he finds sanctuary in the leeward island of Nevis. He's willing to sacrifice his du Dussel? ducal? Uh, ducal title. Because if he's a duke, ducal maybe. 
uh, that doesn't sound like a good word. <laughs> it makes me think of poop, honestly. Ducal. Mm. Okay, so he's going to sacrifice his title for a schoolmaster's life and the solace the island provides. That is until unrest finds its way to Nevis in a storm of pink chiffon. Miss Georgia Lennox. As Georgia and Harrison's apparitions break apart like a ship cast upon the rocks, a new love surfaces, but secrets and circumstances drag them into rough waters. Can they surrender their hearts and love that defies expectations? Now that one to me does sound good, except that one word. <laughs> but that's just me and the way my mind operates, so... Okay, this next book, we're on the last two books. This next one is called The First Time I Said Goodbye, written by Claire Allen. This has 5,092 ratings with an average of 4.19. Um, it's This is historical Ireland, chiclet, and Irish literature. So that's those are the genre tags. Would you hold on tighter if you knew you were saying goodbye forever? In 1959, in 1959, factory girl Stella Hegarty finds herself falling unexpectedly for the charms of a handsome U.S. Marine based in Derry. Caught up in a whirlwind of romance which rivals the, the great love stories in the movies she so loves, Stella finds herself planning a new life in America with her beloved Ray. But when tragedy steps in, both their lives are thrown into turmoil, and they come to realize they may have said their first and last goodbye. In 2010, Animal... So this is going to be a multiple timeline. In 2010, Animal Jackson, reeling from the loss of her beloved father, agrees to, to accompany her mother, Stella, back to Ireland to meet her family for the first time. As the pair arrive in Derry, they both start to realize that sometimes you have to say goodbye to what you thought you always wanted in order to find what you have needed all along. So, that actually sounds like that will be sweet. Okay, this last one is called Loving the Marquess, written by Susanna Mitterroyce. This is book number one in Landing a Lord series. This has 3,657 ratings with an average of 3.94. As far as the genre tags, it says it's British literature, it has illness, it's a Regency romance, and then obviously a historical romance. So, uh, not much to go off there. And let's see. He wasn't supposed to fall in love with her. The Marquess of Overly's plan was perfect. Mary the Desperate Louisa Evans, saving her and her siblings from ruin uh, and produce an heir. But when he proposes, Nicholas doesn't tell her the real reason they must wed so quickly. They are married when Louisa learns the Marquess doesn't intend to father his, his future heir himself. Okay. Drawn to her new husband in a way she never expected, Louisa has no intention of agreeing to his scandalous proposition. Instead, she shows him that what is developing between them goes far beyond a typical marriage of convenience. Nicholas never imagined he would fall in love with Louisa. Despite the distance he tries to put between them, one thing soon becomes clear. He will never allow another man to touch her, even if it dooms his family's future. Okay, I am intrigued by that, <laughs> but we will see where that one goes whenever it is that I eventually get to that. So those are all of the recently acquired historical romances, as you will have seen through going through all of these. Some of these are sweet, some of them are Christian, some of them are going to be erotica or steamy. Um, so eventually I'll get to these. I don't know when, but eventually. <laughs> so that'll be it. Let me know if you've read anything by any of these authors or if you've read any of these books that I talked about. Uh, definitely talk to me in the comments. If you have a particular historical romance book or author or series that you absolutely love, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely check it out. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. So until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.